Mm. How's everybody doing today? Come on, how many of you are glad to be in this place and in this space on this day? We are grateful to God for all that the Lord is doing. Before I, I make these announcements, let me tell the, uh, the uh, sound crew that my scripture today, I, I realize I forgot to send it to you, is from... It's right there, Psalm 139, 14. All right? Y'all got it? So put in both NRSV and message, and, and then put it on the screen because I want to read it from the screen. I usually do this before I come out, but it didn't work out that way today. But let's thank God for our sound team and our tech crew. Now, I know... I know who, who, who's doing the digital fast? Let me see my folk again. Digital fast, people. All right. Good, good, good. How has it been going? Yeah, y'all been struggling, huh? Some of y'all. By now, it should be all right and easy, right? You, 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 uh, you should be used to not having TV. I know it's tough, especially given the playoff time. Football, you got to record that. Just record that, all right? But it's been, it's been beautiful. How many, how, let me see, how many after hearing what I said went and got a record player? Let me see. Anybody got a record player? All right, yeah, you gotta get, you better get them, them those 45s and all that stuff gonna start coming back in style. Whenever you see stores now selling record players, now, like at Barnes, you know it's about to come back in. Now, those of you who don't even know what records feel like, you know, it's gonna be a different feel. So we're grateful to that. Let me give a few announcements. In light of the digital fast, we're going to be doing a few things during the remaining time to build our connections. And so this Thursday, January 17th at 6 p.m., we're going to have an old school game night here at FCBC. All right? Don't say it for y'all clap. It ain't like you're doing anything at 7. At, or, you know, at six. We should have changed it to 7, actually, because everybody trying to get their last little TV in at 6. But we're going to do that at 6, and uh, it'll be so that we can begin to develop our human connection, meet people, uh, meet new people. Um, if you want to, feel free to bring your own snacks and games, but we'll provide some stuff that night to eat and drink. I'm, I'm going to, heaven asked me, was I going to sponsor it? So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm a sponsor that evening. And so you might want to get here early because the sponsor food may go quick. <laughs> so you may want to get here early. The sponsor stuff may actually go quick. I'm just saying. So they're going to have space tournaments, board games, and more. All these wannabe space players in here, you know, you know, wannabe, wannabe. Uh, we're going to see on Thursday. And then don't forget, on Sunday, February 3rd, is our annual Super Bowl party. We want to share with people. We have sign up online on table and lobby to come serve and volunteer. Um, we also, as always, we give out kind of travel size um, toiletries to those who come. We invite some of the shelters from the neighborhood, neighborhood to come in, men and women shelters and family to come in on that day. Um, we want to do some more things. We usually give free haircuts to the men and we have beauticians who style hair and we do that. But if you are a barber or a beautician and you want to volunteer maybe an hour or so that day, please come to the table in the lobby um, after service. Let us know. And you can contact Minister Heaven. She'll have a team out there. But please, if you are a barber, now a for real barber, don't be like, you know, don't be playing with it. Like, because I know when, when back in the days and we didn't have much, I couldn't afford to take my son to get haircuts. So I used to, you know, fade him up. Now, I thought I was pretty good, but I don't want those kind of people volunteering, all right? Because, you know, if you mess up your son here, what are you going to say? I mean, at five or six. But... But we don't want nobody messing up nobody here, messing up their hairline. Have somebody walking out here, the hairline back here. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want none of that. So, so if you're a for real barber, like, you know, you got license and you certified, or you're a beautician and you want to volunteer, that's a way to give back. Volunteer an hour on that day. We encourage you to sign up. The more people we have, the more people we can serve that day who will be blessed by your services and your presence. Amen? Good, good. Okay. We gonna, I was coming out with Dawn. Dawn going to see these on my next. She's talking about, who are you, the Jungle Brothers now? Because I had to. That's for the older folk. Young folk, Jungle Brothers. But if you're from New York and you hip-hop like in the 80s, you know 
I was like, no, these are Buddhist prayer beads, okay? Not Jungle Brothers, you know, I ain't about to come straight out the jungle, jungle right now, but, but, um, and I, it's so funny, I had a, we had dinner this week, and I was talking to a gentleman um, who's Jewish, and he asked me, he said, he said, maybe the next evolution of human beings is that we get to a point where we don't honor one religion, we honor many religious traditions. And, and I said, you know, I said, I, I hope so. I hope that's part of our evolution. And we said it here on New Year's Eve night, and we said, we said we've been saying it. I've been trying to track down who said the quote, so it's not my quote, but I haven't been able to find out who said it, because every time I come across it, I don't get a name. But that quote says that humanity should be our race and love our religion. When we begin to see humanity as our race and love as our religion, it changes our associations. And I, and I want to get to a place where love becomes our religion, not your denomination or not your background, because the truth of the matter is, even in, the, in Christian scriptures, it says, if you have all, Paul said, if you have all kind of gifts, all kind of abilities, but you don't have love, he said, you are nothing, nothing. And so we want to honor love in all that we do in some way, shape, or form. And so let's go to the scripture. Before we go to the scripture, for somebody yell it out. You know how FCBC folk are, you know, you can't break no routines up in here. Uh, we want to declare our purpose statement uh, before we move forward. The, this purpose statement, again, these are universal words. If you notice, these are words that anyone can utter who believes in God. So let's say this together. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers. Lit. He said, y'all sound real good. He said, Samantha, y'all do. It sounds pretty good. But call to live the lives we are created to live. I'm going to talk about that today. But you have to make sure you honor the life that you were created to live and not someone else's life. And I'm going to talk about that today. Um, and then love beyond the limits of our prejudices. And that we're commanded to do so. And that goes back to this idea that love should be our religion. What would it look like if you honored God and worshiped God through honoring love and honoring love in your daily life? Not just something you use for special people, a word, I love you, but something you live, that love becomes the lens and it becomes the, the filter by which you live your life. You honor your life. So you learn to love beyond the limits of your prejudices. And then lastly, we are commissioned to serve. That's what we do here at FCBC. Some of our biggest um, events and programs we, do, programs we do here are around service. For me, that is what it means to be a follower of the carpenter, of Jesus. Those people who are trying to figure out what it looks like to get into the kingdom, he made it clear. When you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the visitor, go visit those who are imprisoned in jails, or rather welcome the stranger. You know, those are the things that signify you're worthy of the kingdom. It is not about how much money you have or how much prestige you have or how much power you have or how popular you are. The kingdom is about how much you're willing to serve those who are in need. And guess what? If you have never been in need, God bless you. But I know, I know for a fact, growing up, what it looked like. See, I know what it looked like to go to the church and wait in line for the box cheese. I don't know nothing about that. Y'all playing. And the bologna in the box, yeah. And I couldn't stand. My grandmother had no sense of size when she would cut the bologna. I couldn't stand. If whoever had the bologna, had you had to cut. Don't lie, see? We know. And she, I, I would try. You know, I was too young to want to demand my own way, but I couldn't understand why she couldn't cut it thinner. Like it was so thick. And then, 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 if you really was bad, you did what? You fried that bad boy, don't? What? You know, how many of y'all know about fried bologna sandwiches, see? There you go. When you see it bubbling up on the skillet, man, y'all playing, y'all playing, y'all playing. That's, a, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Y'all don't know about that? Man, then you got fancy at breakfast. You put an egg on it, then what? What? Y'all playing. See, some of y'all don't know about that, but same thing with the cheese. Same thing with cheese. I just try to get smooth and get, you know, the thing that you use to peel. I used to get the peeler and try to get the cheese, make it real thin. I the same thing. You can't really eat a bologna and cheese sandwich that's super thick. You choke to death. 
So, yeah, that, but okay, let me, I digress. I digress. But we're called to serve, amen? So we're called to live, commanded to love, and commissioned to serve. And if you can't remember all that, we have three powerful words for you. What? Live, love, serve. Live, love, serve. Good. We're going to go to Psalm 139 and 14. Uh, now again, you got to let it just take a deep breath and let it go. You got to do that. You got to breathe. You have to breathe. Sometimes, you know, I, I remember we did a retreat a few years ago, and I was doing these breathing exercises and meditation. And I told, I warned people, sometimes when you take deep breaths, you're going to choke. Or you might start coughing. And it's deep because it might be that, you know, you got to ask yourself, when was the last time I took an intentional deep breath? That we take our breathing sometimes for granted. We just move throughout the day and we breathe and we breathe in. But very often, very rarely do we pause to take deep intentional breaths and fill our lungs and feel it. And for some of us, when you do that, it hurts sometimes because you haven't done it, con in, you know, consistently. So every now and again, you got to just exhale and let some of this stuff go because and learn to let some things go on your exhale. You breathe in and you release some things on your exhale. And you release not just some things. Sometimes you got to breathe and release some folk. Gosh, like the exhale is a way of saying bye, right? I ain't got time for this foolishness no more. Psalm, Psalm 139 and 14, oh, there it is. Okay, make sure you get the message up there, though, because I, I don't have it one. All right, Psalm 139 and 14, I praise you, and I won't say, it, oh, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and wonderful are your works that I know very well. And in the Message Bible, I don't have my wand, John Lesson. They, see, when I might do that, you got to go to it, man. I told you to put it up there before. All right. That's 13. I need 14. Verse 14. Come on, let's let try to. Man. Mm. There you go. Hi, God. I don't know if that's it, though, but I'm going to read that. I don't sound like the message, but I'm going to read it. Your breathtaking body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. NRSV version says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you today, and we honor you for this wonderful day, this majestic moment a moment, O oh God, that has been shaped by you and given by you and granted by you. And we are truly, truly humbled, O oh God, that you even are mindful of us. Thank you, O oh God, for being so mindful of us. And thank you, O oh God, for continually showering us with your love and your kindness and your mercy and your forgiveness. All of that, O oh God, towards us, for us, in us, O oh God, for that we are grateful. God. We ask today that we allow peace to be our companion. And we would rest in peace today. Because, oh Lord, the truth is that there are too many things we are too concerned about that do not matter. And so we want to be peace today. Not just have peace, but be peace. Be the peace we seek in our lives, oh God. So thank you for the opportunity and the privilege. We love you. And it's in your name we pray. I'm, amen. In the, the NRSV version says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Do me a favor today. We are in the be human. Last week was what? Be love. Turn to your neighbor today and tell them, neighbor, be authentic. Come on, turn to your other neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, be authentic. Amen. Now put your hands together and give the Lord a hand. Come and praise today. Powerful and transcendent words are found from the great writer, poet, Shakespeare in Act One of Hamlet. This above all, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. The famous poet Rita Dove says something that blew my mind as I was reading this week. She said, being true to yourself 
really means being true to all the complexities of the human spirit. And if you're going to be true to yourself, you must then be true to all the complexities that make you who you are. And whether you know it or not, or maybe you already know it, or some people have told you, you are complex. You, very complicated. And that's okay because that's actually part of what makes you so powerful, so beautiful. And we, you, we lose sometimes the ability to be true to ourselves when we find ourselves trying to water ourselves down to be uh, pleasing or, or, or even palatable for some other people. Those words, this above all, to thine own self be true. And, and, I, and I've read that, heard that so many times during my life. But there's often a loophole in there that if you really look at it, to thine own self be true. The question is, what self are you trying to be true to? Who, what self that you've constructed that you are seeking to be true to? Because often we construct, fabricate, create selves, and the selves we fabricate, create are often in reaction to our inability to rest in our uniqueness. And because we're unable at times to rest in our uniqueness, rest in our divine nature at times, we find ourselves creating other personalities and other selves to make people pleased or at least comfortable with being around us. I know, I know that's the case for so many of us, and I think about often when we try to be true to ourselves, here's what you realize. If you're trying to be true to yourself and it's not good enough for people around you, change the people around you. If you're trying to be true to yourself and it's not good for people around you, do what? Change the people around you. Don't start contorting your personality to fit into models that you were not constructed or designed for. Don't try to fit yourself into spaces that you were not built to fit into. Be true to you. This is what my, you, you've been here long enough, my favorite philosopher, religious thinker is Soren Kierkegaard. And Kierkegaard said that you have to be careful that you don't become an inauthentic human. Now, he said inauthentic man, but I'm going to make it universal, inauthentic human beings. And, and, and for Kierkegaard, to be inauthentic was tragic. To not be yourself was tragic. He said that inauthentic humans only recognize themselves in the external. They don't see within. They don't see who they are. They only recognize themselves by external factors, and they reduce their personality to what he called trivial externalities. The things that are trivial, that are outside of you, that we put so much weight on, how we dress, what we wear, what we have, how we engage, the places we live, these are actually trivial externalities because none of these things can actually deepen your understanding of the complexities of your humanity. These things become coverings for people who are trying to hide behind things that perish. Oh gosh, that, that these externalities become the things that often we dive into, hide ourselves in because we're afraid of the uniqueness of our own personality and we're also afraid of people finding out who we really are. And the reason why we're afraid of people finding out who we really are, because at the end of the day, one, we don't know who we really are and two, we're afraid of actually finding out who we really are. Are. You see, many people tell you, you got to have goals in life. You, you got to achieve things. You got to be successful. We're told that from the beginning. And see, the tragedy is not having been successful, or the tragedy is not having great achievements, or the tragedy is not having done great things. The tragedy has come to a place where you never became aware of who you really are. That's the real tragedy, to not be aware of who you really are and live a life shrouded in pretentiousness, shrouded in externalities, shrouded in these ideas that you think you ought to fulfill for other people's opinions and other people's expectations, looking for the affirmation and validation and accolades from people because you want to feel better about yourself. And the only way you can feel better about yourself is through these trivial externalities. You need people to tell you how good you are. You need people to tell you how smart you are. You need people to tell you how good you look. And that's why you go through all kind of, I said, contortions, emotional, spiritual, psychological, physical contortions, trying to make other people happy. And at the end of the day, you know that misery is your best companion. You know yourself that your misery and your unhappiness always walk with you. And at the end of the day, you then must pretend, be pretentious, put on the mask, put on the disguise, because you're afraid of being true to who you are. You, you will lie for people who are wounding you because you're afraid of being you. you. You will protect people who are destroying you because you rather live in the lie of their imagination of who you ought to be than in the authenticity of who God designs you to be. 
I said New Year's Eve, that word for wonderful in the Hebrew, pala, which means incomprehensible, beyond the power of human comprehension. When you let that thing sink in, that you, you fearfully, wonderfully made, that you, with all of your complexities, that you, with all of your different personality quirks, you, you, at the end of the day, you were designed to be beyond the power of human comprehension. And God designs you to be incomprehensible. So you might as well live and walk in your office authenticity, because if you're trying to get people to understand who you are, that's not how God built you. That's not how God made you. God made you something not to be easily understood. Oh, that doesn't mean you go out of your way now to be misunderstood. It means that you accept the possibility that you will be misunderstood by people who can't first and foremost even comprehend themselves. Do you know how many people you've tried to get to affirm you who confuse about their own identity? Do you know how many people you've tried to get to love you who don't even know the selves that they are trying to love? Do you know how many people you wasted energy on to get validation and they don't even know how to congratulate themselves? Look at somebody and tell them, be authentic. Be authentic. Because you don't want to be inauthentic and become tranquilized by the trivial. You you don't want to be inauthentic and become overwhelmed with things that have nothing to do with who you really are. You got to be careful because inauthentic humans don't belong to themselves. Inauthentic humans are not their own person. They do not act from their own center. They are thoroughly immersed in the fictional games being played in our society and unable to transcend social constructs of who you ought to be. They're unable to transcend social conditioning. So you can't think for yourself and you don't try to think for yourself. You try to fall in to prescribe ideas of who you should be and you don't even want to think for yourself or be unique because to be unique and think for yourself in your mind is prohibitively audacious. Oh gosh, I hope you got that. That's a good phrase. Prohibitively audacious. You don't want to be that bold so you rather sink into what's acceptable by everybody else. You went to school because you want to be this thing that they told you to be. You had dreams because they were told what your dreams ought to be. You had ideas for yourself and you wanted to please people so you fit in. And in the whole process, you lost your center, lost the sense of who you are, please everybody else, and you became inauthentic. Again, inauthentic humans only recognize themselves through other people's lenses. They only see themselves through externalities. Remember, trivial externalities. Inauthentic people, inauthentic people, inauthentic humans are afraid to live in possibility. See, possibility suggests there's more. But when you don't, when you're afraid of living in possibility, you rather do what is manageable and acceptable. Oh, man, I'm hitting somebody today. Imagine living your whole life so that it could be manageable. Just imagine living your whole life because it's acceptable to do what you're doing. And all you're doing is fitting into niches. And let's go deep for it. Not even deep. Let's get real. Most of us have been trained to live our whole lives to make other people wealthy. I'm not saying that wealth is the, is the aim. Surely that's not my ministry. I'm not into that. But what I'm saying is that we spend our whole lives giving the best of our talents to enhance the lives of other people. And that's what we're called to do as service, but not to be manipulated and taken for granted. And we miss that sometimes because we're busy not being authentic because being authentic is too terrifying. It means standing alone sometimes on an island. It means being by yourself at times when nobody else understands you. It means taking a step when no one else takes a step. And sometimes in this world, it's not about taking a step forward. You realize that you're the only one who didn't step back and so you feel alone. When most people take the step back, you just stand still, and then all of a sudden you find yourself by yourself. It's not that you try to move forward. You just realize you're surrounded by people who are going in reverse. So at the same time, there's something powerful about being authentic. Why is it important to be authentic? It's important to be authentic because, after all, the world needs you. 
Man, I know you don't think so. That's so simple, right? And you may not think, the world needs you. And you probably say to yourself, no, not me. I live like, I'm, I live like, you know, an, an insignificant life. I don't really live this big life. I don't have a lot of money and I'm not famous and I don't got a bunch of followers on social media. media. And so what's, what's significant? Yes, the world needs you. You see, the trivial externalities made you think that you only became necessary by having those things. And you forgot that it's your uniqueness that gives shape to the universe. You and your uniqueness give shape to the universe. Look at all the people in here. Just look around and you will see all the unique features of God's imagination. That God can create us to look so different, have so many different abilities, so many different uh, uh, um, of talents, and yet sometimes they overlap. And when those talents overlap between people, that means you were brought together for a greater good. We forget that sometimes. I mean, just think about you. Your incomprehensible self. Your, your, I mean, think about that. You all don't understand. New Year's Eve, when I shared that with you and even sharing again with you, you, you understand how powerful that is? Do you understand how life-changing that concept is when you believe that you are incomprehensible? Now, that don't mean you go around trying to be a puzzle. That's the other thing. Now, now you're trying to be in, you're trying to be a puzzle. You, you're trying to get deep and ain't nothing deep about it. You, you're trying to have, you know, everything you do now, you're trying to hide it under this incomprehensibility. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you in your quiet presence, in your sanctified stillness, are incomprehensible. And the world needs you. You add color to this space. You add something to this world. Your breath matters. So that means your authenticity matters. The world needs you. The world needs you because there's something in you that will give shape to the world. You got to believe that. I'm going to say what I said last week. If, if, if a carpenter and a fisherman can believe that they can change the world, why can't you believe that? Why, why can't you believe that? But see, here's the thing. The carpenter understood who he was. The fisherman was a fisherman. And they realized that they could be who they are and still change the world. They did not have to change themselves to change the world. You could be true. As, it, is, it is something. She said, isn't that something? Yeah, that you can actually be you and have universal impact because that's what the world has been waiting for. The world has seen too many frauds already. The world is filled with popular pretenders. The, the, the world already has all that. What, what the world is lacking are people who come alive by their authenticity. That's what the world is lacking. And that's what we, and I hope, happens for you, that you begin to walk in the fullness of your authenticity, that you begin to not be caught up in trivial externalities, that you're not tranquilized by the trivial, that you're trying in some way to live this authentic life because you realize that your life is designed to be lived in freedom and in the freedom of possibilities. But again, if you're busy being inauthentic, freedom becomes dangerous. Oh, gosh. When you're inauthentic, you become a slave to culture and social formation and social expectations. And some of us are so, and I've said this, I'm going to keep saying this all year, right? And you can quote me on this one. This ain't, some, this is me, right? I'm going to give you this one, though. That when you are, and you heard it right, but when you are afraid of freedom, you will always seek new masters. Remember that. When you are afraid of freedom, you will always seek new masters, and the masters will take on various forms, shapes, and appearances. And the masters are not always human. When you're afraid of freedom, your clothes can become your master. When you're afraid of freedom, your things can become your master. When you're afraid of freedom, people who are not free but know how to manipulate your insecurity become your master. That is key. You have to be authentically you. Be the you that God had in mind when God made you. Be the you filled with possibility that God wanted you to be. Get to a place when the impossible is always possible for you. Get to a point when you launch out into the deep on a regular basis and you discover the uncharted territories are filled with great possibility. Be so authentic that people get offended when you try to pretend. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Be so authentic that people get offended when you try to pretend because they've gotten so accustomed to you being you. 
make people angry. I want people to be angry when they see me faking. I, I want them to be so comfortable with my authenticity that they get angry when they see me faking. Now, the prayer is you ain't going to see me faking. But I want to be that authentic, and you ought to be, want to be that authentic. And here it is. Being authentic may not mean that you have all the money in the world. It may not mean that you have all the external trappings and you have the things that give visibility. But being authentic might mean you have peace in your spirit. And see, there's some folk right now don't know how valuable peace is because they haven't been introduced fully to chaos. But it's some of us who've been introduced to chaos, hell, and insanity. And we know how profound peace is. And when you're authentic, who knows that your authenticity always seeks to rest in peace, you then have an eye, uh, again, for those who are not authentic. And you don't become judgmental, because, see, that's a sign of problems, too. When you now think you got it, and you're looking at people, and you're now shaking your head at people. I can't believe she's like that. And, and you, because, see, as, as Mother Teresa said, when I'm busy loving you, I ain't got time to judge you. And so you don't worry about judging people. You don't try to tell people who wrong, because there's some people who get a little enlightened, they want to educate everybody. You know, you get a little ed you get a little enlightened. Now, every time you open your mouth, you the teacher, you the specialist, you got the insight. You want to let everybody know that you know more than everybody else. See, that's inauthentic too, because a person who's really smart don't have to go around telling how smart they are. They can rest in their own sense of knowledge of who they are. When every time you're trying to go around and prove how smart you are, prove how much you know, something's deeply wrong with you. That you don't have to. I've learned this, and I said this not too long. Go, that, that the more aware you become of who you are, the more silence becomes a welcome friend. Oh, man, you heard that? See, I, I realized this. I didn't get it back in the days because back in the days when I got me a little education, you know, and, and I started getting a little smart, I thought I had to let people know I was smart. I went to college. I went to grad school. I did, I, I'm smart, and I thought I had to let people know how smart I was. But, you see, that's because I was smart but not enlightened. And then when I became enlightened, I realized that after I became enlightened, I wasn't aware. Oh, gosh. And that with the awareness comes a radical consciousness of who you are and who God is inside of you. So that when you have a radical God consciousness that's based on enlightenment, you realize something, that you don't have to walk around proving anything. And again, you learn to become silent. And I got that. I would see people who I knew had like, was super verbose, always had something to say. And all of a sudden, these same people, all of a sudden, didn't have much to say in meetings. They got quiet. And I understand, it looks so peaceful and so happy. I thought something was wrong with them. But I got it that when you are aware of who you are, you become quiet. And you only speak when it's necessary. The problem is I'm in a profession when it's always necessary to speak. But you only become, you only speak when it's necessary because you're clear about who you are and you're content with your authenticity. God did not put you on this planet to look like me, to sound like me, to look like your neighbor, to sound like your neighbor. God wanted you to tap into your own vibrations, your own energy, your own consciousness of who you are. God wanted you to be authentic. So being authentic is what it means to be human. Stop being a people pleaser because you'll die of a broken heart. Stop trying to live in other people's expectations because you'll lose you. Stop trying to think that your joy is connected to making other people happy while you remain miserable. Be true to you because the world needs you and we need you. And you may be the missing ingredient for the world to get back its sanity. You, you, right where you live, right where you are, the universe is sitting around you on tiptoe waiting for you to walk in the fullness of who you are. You could have, and it happens that you ever be walking down the street and all of a sudden your hair starts standing and you start getting goosebumps and don't know where it's coming from. You feel a presence. That presence is trying to remind you who you are. And if you get quiet enough and still enough, you can hear the echoes of memory reminding you about yourself. And that's all you have to do. Be, be human. 
be love, and most of all, what? Be authentic. Doors of the church open. Come on, stand on your feet today. When I was younger in ministry, this is real, when I started preaching, I thought that, man, if you preach, man, folk got to be shouting and running around the church. And if they ain't shouting and carrying on, you ain't said nothing. That's when I was young. But then I realized that my aim as a preacher wasn't to be impressive, it was to be impactful. And sometimes impactful means that you speak to people's souls and their hearts. And it's not about me preaching at you or to you. It's about us having a public soul conversation. It's the deep of God within me reaching out to the deep of God within you. And out of that depth rises a sacred conversation, soul to soul. And that's why we're here. And when you begin to live life that way, it takes away a lot of the stress and the pain of life. There are some pains you carry daily because you have too much toxic stuff in you. That the easing your pain doesn't come with medication. It comes by releasing the toxic stuff and the toxic personalities that are in your life. Your muscles get weary. Your back gets weary. But maybe this is about learning how to live in peace and authenticity. So if you're here today and, and God is saying that in your spirit, you feel God saying, come, be part of this movement. And you've never been baptized. And baptized is an outward sign of an inward and spiritual grace. It is a public announcement of an inner beginning. It does not mean that when you get baptized, people just get scared. I'm going to get baptized because that means i got to change immediately. And some of y'all ran from the water because y'all was running into the other waters. Uh, baptism is this beautiful sign that something is beginning. A journey is beginning. So if God is saying, maybe you need to be baptized today, my brother, my sister, I want to invite you to that process. And, and maybe God is telling you that maybe this place has become your spiritual building place. Maybe, maybe, maybe God is saying, maybe God is saying that this will be the place you, for this season, that will be your spiritual home. Because here's what I'm a believer of, that there are places that God brings you to for seasons sometimes, and sometimes God brings you to the place to make home. But this may be home or a season. Either way, it's a place for your development. So if God is saying that you need to be a part of this family because something here is clicking in your soul, not your, not your emotions, in your soul. If that's you, if you're upstairs, we'll wait for you. If you're downstairs in the rear, we'll wait for you. But this is your moment, your time to step out and say, God, here I am. In any way you want to use me, do that. We used to... We used to grow up in church, and we said, anyway, you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. But no, I, I've shifted that in my own life. Any way you want to use me, God, I will be satisfied. However you want to use me, that's my aim. That's my goal. Amen? Come on, join hands with your neighbor. Yeah. For your glory. Yeah, for your glory, God. Let's go to God in prayer. 
God, we are so grateful for this day. So thankful, oh God, that you allowed us to wake up this morning with breathing in our lives. Thank you, God, that you've given us ways and shown us how to remain peaceful in the most tumultuous of situations if we would just go inward and seek you. Seek you within. Your son, Jesus, said that the kingdom of God is within, which means that instead of being bogged down by the trivial externalities, maybe it's time for us to go on continuous inward journeys so that we can get closer to you, God, and begin to live lives that are pleasing to you. Because, God, we are fearfully, wonderful, wonderfully made, and wonderful are your works. We know them very well, but, God, what good is it to honor your creativity but not honor our authenticity? So, God, we want to honor you by being true to who you made us to be. Thank you, God. God, each of us celebrate right now that there is nobody else like us. We celebrate that right now. There's nobody else like us individually. We bear not only your image and your imprint, but the uniqueness of your imagination. Thank you, God. We love you. We love you so much, and we are so grateful. So continue, O oh Lord, to just have your way in our lives. We will continue to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise because, oh God, at the end of the day, we want to be where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is our prayer. In your name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Come on, give somebody a hug. Tell them that you love them today. of the doors we have one to come we have Danielle Walker and today is her birthday too amen watch this on the count of three we're going to tell Danielle happy birthday already all right not already one two three look at that when was the last time you had like 800 people tell you happy birthday amen happy birthday we're so glad that on your birthday God is beginning something new today, and that's being part of this family. We celebrate that, and we celebrate you, and we're excited about your presence, your presence, and I mean that. We're excited about your presence in this place. It means a lot to us to have you here and to have made this decision today. Amen. Come on, FCB, extend those hands. Thank you, Lord, for one more soul. Thank you, Lord, for one more soldier. Thank you, Lord, for one more warrior. Thank you, Lord, for one more family member. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. 